in this day and age, being being prolific is kind of a necessity. Um, unless if if you're going to make a full time living, if you're going to be a full time writer um, and be a novelist, have that be primarily what you're writing and that be your source of income. Uh, you have to be able to churn out work. And it isn't even so much that, you know, like a throwback to the heyday of the, um, you know, pulp writers and that. It's it's not even so much that is the, the competition and the people, and I use the word competition loosely because really authors aren't competing against each other. But there are lots of indie authors, self-published authors out there putting out great work at a prolific breakneck speed. Um, and unless you've got hundreds of thousands of New York dollars behind you and a massive ad campaign and you're being shoved out there to all the Barnes and Nobles and Walmarts and Targets and Amazon and all of that, unless you've got that huge machine behind you, which doesn't even mean you're going to be successful then, you have to match who's in your market. And for me, in the genre market, sci-fi, thriller, action, adventure, whatever, mixtures of all of that, horror, is that is especially science fiction now, is being dominated by indie writers, uh, indie publishers. Um, so I got to keep up. And that's, that's all I have to do. It is a machine, step-by-step work ethic that I have to tackle. I understand that when I start my novel, you know, the new novel, I need to have it done in four weeks because I need to get paid my advance and I need to be able to move on to the next thing. And there's life and there's chaos. So it's not like every four weeks I'm cranking out something. Things get in the way, but you know, because things get in the way, life gets in the way, life happens around you, to you (laughs) during the process. You have to prepare for that. So I start with an idea. I will write some notes down to kind of flesh things out a little bit more. Sometimes I will outline if if I don't if I can't if I don't have it built well in my head, I will put it on a piece of paper and I will start outlining and getting it down and, and building it that way. Uh, but I won't spend a lot of time on that. I'll spend you know a day. Because I got to get to the writing and I don't want to spend 10,000 words on an outline. Those 10,000 words should be in the novel. <laughs> um, so, you know, instantly idea to fleshing it out more to start writing. Boom, get into that. Uh, my trajectory tends to be a 45 degree angle. If we were to graph uh, my productivity, it's pretty much flat out 45 degrees. Uh, starting out, I'm figuring things out. I'm figuring characters out. I'm figuring setting out. I'm still kind of figuring the plot out. Um, so I'm writing a thousand words a day, two thousand words a day, maybe three thousand words a day uh, if things are kind of flowing. And then that just progressively gets more over the days and the weeks uh, to the point where I tend to write the last third of a novel, so about 25,000 words, the last third of the novel within about three to four days. Um, Usually about three days because I've already done the heavy lifting. I've already done all the work. I've created the characters. I've created the setting. I've created the plot, all the everything. The momentum is there. All I have to do is get everybody to that climax and then finish it up. You know, because that's kind of how an, a novel goes. It's it's these spikes, boom, little mini climaxes until you get to the big one. And then you wrap it up and then the book ends. Um, and that's, you know, I use the basic three act structure. So if I'm writing a 75,000 word novel, 25,000 words per act, I understand that, um, and I was talking to another writer, you know, who says, well, I write in four acts, but I kind of take the third act and chop it into two and then extend them a little. I just don't extend them. Because if you're using the third act structure, you understand your actual climax of your novel isn't at the end. It's in the middle of the third act. And then the rest of the third act is wrapping it all up so your readers are satisfied and get the ending they want. Um, so, you know, I that's how I kind of chunk things out. I do everything in small pieces. I understand um, when I sit down in the morning, I'm not completing the novel that day. But I do have a word goal that I need to hit. I do have a scene goal I need to hit. 
and um, I regiment myself. This is a job. <laughs> I am my own boss, manager, employee, everything. Um, I can't be the slacker employee. You know, that, that doesn't work. I, you know, I also can't be the overbearing boss who's like, you know, crank words, crank words until you die because that's not going to be good for me long term. I still have to like what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I can't beat myself up all the time and crack the whip. So I have to find that strange, happy medium of being the great productive employee while also being the boss that, that sees the big umbrella of everything and the end goal and knowing where it all goes. Um, I, I attack it that way. I attack it as a job. I attack it as I need to get this amount of work done every day. And at the end, it has to, the product has to fit this criteria of quality, action, length, the right, you know, whatever that mixture is. And then in this business, hope that even if I've put my heart and soul and all that work and everything, hope it's the right timing for when that book comes out. Because you can still kick ass all month long and if it, that when it gets published, that book, it isn't the right time for that book, it all fizzles. But um, it's one reason I'm prolific is because, you know, I've said it a million times, the vast majority of books out there are going to die. And it makes no difference what their quality is. It's luck and timing that makes something a hit. Um, so I got to keep churning out books because I got to keep hoping... <laughs> I'm throwing something out there that is going to hit and then that can get me through the next few misses because there are way more misses than hits always and that's just kind of part of how I have to look at it being prolific it's a necessity it just is especially in this day and age <laughs>